Well, hey guys, happy Sunday. FYI, you know, over on Instagram, every Sunday, uh, I do a little Q&A. Like, I post a photograph to my feed, if you follow me over there, and people leave their skincare questions as comments. The same post gets posted over on my Facebook page simultaneously by default, so people who follow me over on Facebook also can leave questions on the simultaneous Facebook post. I answer the questions, but I post the questions and my responses to them on my Instagram stories. The stories stay up for 24 hours, however, I'm able to save them to my Q&A highlight, which is, if you go to my Instagram page, there are all these bubbles across the top, and one of them is called Q&A. If you click on that, you can see a ton of questions that I've answered over like the prior months, weeks. I do it every Sunday. So I've amassed quite a collection of, of questions and answers over there. So I've been doing this on Instagram for going on two, almost three years now, I want to say. And I get a lot of questions. I try and answer questions I haven't answered before or like recently. Um, or if it is a question I get a lot, I try and, you know, interject some new information into the response. So the post goes up every Sunday morning around 9 a.m. So I'm going to go do it in a bit. And I usually spend um, the first hour after it goes up answering que uh, questions. Um, I usually answer right away about 10 or 11. But then throughout the week, I continue to go back to the comments on that post and answer new questions. So if you weren't able to leave a question there like around 9 a.m. in the morning on Sunday, don't worry, you can still go back and leave your question because I, I go back to the comments over the next few days and continue to answer new questions that I get. I'm able to sort the comments there based on most recent comments. So for example, on Tuesday, if I have some time, I'll go over to the Sunday post. I'll look at the comments and I'll sort by newest comment and I'll answer a few of them as well. That way I keep refreshing new information and then I just save it to that Q&A highlight. So, you know, if you're bored one day and you want to scroll through them, you can see all the questions I've answered before. So here's my Instagram profile and you can see I mostly post reels, except on Sunday, I'll post just a static photo of myself and ask you guys to drop your skincare questions below. You can see people drop them there. I then answer them on my Instagram stories. So to access Instagram stories, all you have to do is click on my little photo there and they'll pop up. The Instagram stories only stay in this bubble for 24 hours. So if you miss that, then you just go to the highlight reel Boom, click on that. Takes a little bit of time to load, depending on your connection speed. And there you have the past five weeks of questions that I've answered. I like doing it that way as opposed to, Instagram has this other feature on Instagram stories where the creator can say, ask me anything and it's a little question box and people submit their questions that way. But I don't like doing that as much because not everyone can see the questions that get posted. Whereas if y'all leave your questions as a comment on a post, well then other people can thumbs up those question those questions. And so those will, you know, I can see the ones that get the most thumbs up. You know, those are obviously ones that want to answer that want to be answered that you guys want answers to. So it helps me, you know, like what's gonna be even more helpful to a larger audience, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I've been doing it for a year, a couple of years now, and um, every Sunday uh, around 9 a, quarter to 9, 9 a.m. ish, and I, I spend about roughly an hour answering questions on Sunday morning, and then save them all to the highlight. I also go to my Facebook page as well and look at the questions that I'm getting over there, because see, people follow me on Facebook that don't follow me on Instagram, how do they see the answers? The people that follow me on Facebook that don't follow me on Instagram, they can see the answers on my, my, um, my Instagram stories go directly to my Facebook page as well. So you can see, you can see them there. I don't think you can see the highlight there though on Facebook, however. So you can only see what I've answered in the past 24 hours, I think, on Facebook. Facebook changes it up so much. Now, if you don't have any interest in doing Instagram or Facebook and you, you don't want anything to do with that, but you do have a question, I also suggest 
typing in, you can always leave your question in the comments of my videos, but I also suggest just typing Dr. Dre, whatever the topic is, because there's a good chance I have a video of it on YouTube or a video related to it, because I have uploaded a video onto YouTube every single day for six years, so there's a good chance that I have a video on here that answers your question. But maybe not, you know, there like there's always something new for me to talk about. So don't ever feel like, you know, nervous to leave a comment. I love your comments and they help my videos out if you leave a comment. So never feel bad about leaving a comment. Like it really is doing me a huge favor and it, it takes a lot of time out of your day. But if you don't have time to leave a comment and you really just want the information quickly, but you don't want to do Instagram or Facebook, um, another quick and easy way is to just search Dr. Dre and whatever it is on YouTube, there's a good chance I have a video on it. I'm going to come in with the Hyalu Sika Blue Serum. I've been enjoying this. It makes my skin feel really soft. Coming in with the medium shade today. This bottle though, I think I'm about to finish it up. I was just leaning up against the uh, cabinet handle and it like pinched a nerve somehow and I got a weird tingle down my leg. I hate, I hate it when you like hit a nerve, like your funny bone, like your elbow. Isn't that the most miserable feeling? It's like the little shocks. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. It's good you have a little nerve that goes right here. Not little, you have a nerve that goes right through here. But just gives you a little tiny taste of what people do have. You know, some people develop something called trigeminal trophic syndrome. It's a type of uh, chronic nerve uh, pain condition that involves the nerves in the face and like the nasal tip. It's miserable. Like they have pain and like recurrent inflammation and it actually starts to um, erode at their nose. It's, it's really a miserable condition to cope with. It's called trigeminal trophic syndrome. All right, pouring my coffee and I just posted my Instagram, so I'm gonna settle down, answer some questions. I'm over here in TJ Maxx and they have the most adorable, um, I don't know what it is, for Easter. Isn't this pretty? It's really nice. And they have this matching goblet. I just think that's really pretty. And how cute is this? for Lunar New Year, Year of the Rabbit. I love that, and the plate. Hey look, Paper Edge um, has dual tip highlighter. So I have, my current planner is this Paper Edge brand, and I have their notebooks too. I get them on Amazon and highly recommend. The paper quality is really good, and they're super affordable. Well, like in comparison to the Erin Condren planner I used to use, um, I've been really pleased because the paper quality is as good as that, but the price is a lot less. <laughs> How sweet are those little chicken ma chick magnets? <laughs> Get it? Chick magnet? <laughs> this TJ Maxx has some nice... What are these? Shea? Lounge? I don't know. Flop on me things? Benches? These are festive. This is nice, although that's kind of pricey. But I like this because these drawers are kind of nice quality, are pretty nice quality. Sometimes these things are like really ratchety. Woo, dreary weather. Kind of a chill in the air as well. TJ Maxx was pleasant. Uh, I'm gonna go, I need to go to the store, but I don't really feel like it. I'm listening to, I'm still listening to that book, Why We Sleep uh, by Matthew Walker. It's really good, really interesting. Let me know in the comments if you, I saw some of you said that you started reading it or listening to it on, I got it on Audible, but I'm sure you can get it at your library as well. Um, Turn left. Okay. But he was just talking about how, you know, humans, friendly reminder, we will die without sleep. It's mind blowing that we willingly put ourselves through sleep deprivation. It's hard to reconcile how widely accepted it is that we just willingly deprive ourselves of sleep. Like that we fight the urge to sleep. 
Many people also struggle with sleep. But you know, one thing I really think is an issue that a lot of people don't end up realizing is an issue for them in terms of their sleep struggle. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are tons of different types of sleep disorders. But I think for a lot of people, a part of it likely is simply lack of control over your time. And if you spend your whole time during the day, as most of us do, working, well, then you kind of want to have take some control of your time, whether it be waking up super early to get stuff done and just have some time to yourself or staying up super late. You know, it's, it's just like we kind of sacrifice sleep almost in the name of actually having a life. <laughs> Uh, I'm finally done with the day, but I gotta go to bed. <laughs> that that makes it really hard to fall asleep. Is it just me? Let me know if you you can relate to them. Anyways, you I'm asking you that, but your battery is about to die. So, night night. Came in here to Old Navy. They're having a sale on t-shirts and these slacks. I thought this color would be good for St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> it's basic green. I love this orange color too. And there's a cute little strawberries with the pink pants. I love this one. It's nice and bright. And the ballet pink pants. Ignore my socks. <laughs> I definitely love these. I think they'd be really cute with the black tank top. They're so comfortable. Just like nice and flowy. Kinda like pajamas, but <laughs> the little swish. Kroger's got all the spring stuff out. What are these? A little water. I guess it's just water bottles. I mean, I got it. When it comes to water bottles, they just suck me in. That's sweet. Doesn't look like they're any new real spring scents for Tuscany. The peach prosecco is really good. They they had that last year. Black cherry looks new with honeysuckle. They also have little hand towels. So they have these little things to put in Easter baskets and these mashems with the Disney princess. I'm not a big Disney watcher or anything, but how sweet is she with the big eyes? They're so cute. Then they also have the calico critters. Look at little nitty bitsies. How cute, you make little outfits for the little, oh this is adorable. Oh my gosh, look at the little scarf. That's really cute. Looks like Shea Moisture has a new baby lotion. Delicate skin, hydrate and nourish. Scented. Hello Bello has a plant-based premium baby lotion fragrance free with shea butter, jojoba seed oil. What looks, what is this? Baby Oilogic, essential oil, vapor bath and shampoo. It's like a mild cleanser with scent with fragrance. What is this? Essential oil vapor bath, stuffy nose and lavender oil. Just hopped out of the shower, coming in with the Eucerin Daily Hydration Gel Cream. I'm about to finish this up. This and the Cetaphil Restoraderm Eczema Flare Up Relief Cream. I am gonna finish up. That, that one I have like eh, a little bit left. Uh, but for me personally, I see such a huge difference in my skin with total body moisturizing. I mean, it is night and day. It's easy to get lazy like on your lower legs or whatever, especially we're having a bit of a cold snap again. And you know, you're wearing pants and stuff. It's like, eh, who cares? But man, that's really when you need the moisturizer the most. You know, the other day I was talking about how with the advent of social media, I feel like, you know, <laughs> Things are so much different. Younger people have so much more to worry about in terms of uh, the the pressure. There's a lot of pressure, I feel like, that they, they're experiencing with, with, you know, preventing wrinkles. And I mean, going to pretty great lengths that you see, at least on TikTok. There just seems to be, I mean, there's always been pressure, um, but and now it's just on another, a whole other level. I had acne 
Um, and I wash my face with Neutrogena salicylic acid face wash. And that was really helpful for me personally. But I was lucky, you know, I didn't, I didn't need to see a dermatologist for my acne. It wasn't that severe. But, uh, and I was able to control it with that cleanser. And I, I didn't try much else. You know, I had that cleanser. I was like, this is an acne cleanser. So this must be what I need to wash my face with. And I used it and it helped. And then later on, I discovered benzoyl peroxide for hormonal breakouts that I would get. But I've had eczema my whole life, so it's more normal for me to have a skincare routine in the sense of moisturizing. Like as a child, I learned very quickly how much moisturizer could make or break. Uh, the next couple of days for me in terms of itch and it, you know coming full circle going through dermatology residency and becoming a dermatologist it's like very gratifying to know that that you know there was a lot to that i saw a dermatologist for my eczema i think once or twice as a child once i think for ch as a child and the rest was like oh yeah this is eczema but you know that very very much like not much uh, there wasn't a whole lot of information that was definitely not mainstream information about atopic dermatitis i mean in general we know so much more about the condition now than we did even like 15 years ago so um all that to say for me personally i have always had a bit of a skincare routine in terms of body moisturizing but the whole concept of serums and toners and um, and all of that, um, that was not mainstream for people to be doing. Funny thing, when I was a really, really little, like a, like two or three, I wrote my letter to Santa Claus and on my letter to Santa Claus, I wrote that I wanted hand cream. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Who knew I would grow up to be a dermatologist and have a YouTube channel talking about all things skincare, including hand creams. But yeah, that's what I wanted as a child. Um, so I, I guess I've always been into skincare on some level, but all that to say, it was just not mainstream back then. In my real life, I don't know many people at all who get cosmetic procedures. There's nothing wrong with getting cosmetic procedures, but it's, it's more normal to not get them, or at least, um, yeah, I mean, it's more normal to not get them than you might think. But when you log on to a social media app, it's like everybody is going to get filler or Botox or talking about it. Those treatments, they can be really, they're really expensive. So don't feel like you're abnormal if you don't see those. I don't even, I don't do them. I'm a dermatologist, I don't do them. There's nothing wrong with them, but like I, I'm just not interested in, do, in doing that. Um, and so there's nothing wrong with not pursuing that kind of stuff. If you want to do it, fine. If you want to do it and it's within your budget and you know, you're not doing it to make somebody else happy, then that is just, you know, perfectly fine. But I feel like, especially with younger people, but honestly everybody as a whole, there is this strange pressure to like seek out these procedures. And it's very sinister in the way that like certain things are shown to you and to, to influence you to feel like you have to do certain things. <sighs> Pajama time. Coming back to what I was saying, you know, when I remember reading, um, there's this ballerina, famous ballerina, Gelsie Kirkland. I remember reading her biography and her talking about getting collagen injected in her lips. And this, I, I must have read this in, I want to say, I probably read this in the, in the like mid to late 90s. And the, the time, I guess she was talking about getting collagen injected in her lips and it must have been maybe the 80s when she got this done. And I can remember at the time, just, you know, I was not the least bit familiar with cosmetic procedures. And at the time, you know, it was not mainstream for people to be getting filler. I had heard of a facelift, uh, and that was something that older women got, right? At the time, that was the thought process. Like, if you had a facelift, you know, that was something that older women, with older rich women got. And so the concept of injecting filler collagen into your lips just seems so bizarre to me. I remember reading this book and thinking like, oh my God, why would you go to such great lengths to physically? Because I, I remember thinking like, what does she mean collagen injected into her lips? And sure, this is something people were doing at the time, but you know, I lived in a small town where I was like, nobody was, like the concept of filler or having collagen placed, injected, it was just not, 
it was not something you were ever going to see anywhere around where I lived <laughs> at the time. And I remember reading this book and just thinking, like, this is so bizarre because the whole reason she had collagen injected in her lips was to be so that her face on stage would be, you know, more would show up better, basically, in a sense. Like, you know, she was very much into the roles. And I mean, she was almost like method acting for ballet. I mean, she was just very intense, like very intense. I should go back and read that book sometime. Uh, just like a very intense personality. And anyway, so she, I, I just remember, it, it's funny because at the time it was like, not only was it so strange and foreign to me that you would inject collagen into your lips, but that she was so young, because she must have been like um, 18, 19 when she ha was doing this, maybe in her early 20s. And at the time, like that was just so foreign, not only to have these injections, but for somebody so young to be doing it because plastic surgery cosmetic surgery that was something that like only older rich women got <laughs> and it's so wild to me that coming you know full circle now here we are and you go online and all of these young girls are getting you know women are getting botox filler on a regular you know yearly or whatever and you know people are free to do what they want um i i you know but it's just so completely different and I really think that this narrative is being put on young younger women in particular that they need to do this preventatively and it's it's funny to me because this is like you know in the grand scheme of things I just you know it's like do you really need to do that um I don't know <laughs> yeah the the concept of preventative Botox to me it's always seemed like a bit of a slippery slope like to tell young women about that, you know, they should have to push upon young, young, young girls, because a lot of them are still even in high school who are going or, or, you know, like college and whatever, you know, I'm not saying that that's wrong, but it's just, I don't know, your face change, like I've said, your face changes a lot with age. And I don't know, just grow into yourself a bit. I feel like because I do think that it can potentially be super harmful to a woman's um, self-esteem and you know mental health to be to feel like she has to do those things and young men too you know my, young males they get left left out of these conversations and it's not not right because they are they are definitely being negatively impacted um, by social media. The problem is they are not like, either they're not as vocal about how it impacts them or nobody's asking because online they put, perpetuate such unrealistic expectations for young males in terms of appearance. And a lot of these big social media influencers, especially in the fitness space, they're all taking these performance enhancing drugs, right? Um, and for young guys, young, like high school age, they think that like, they have to look like that. It's, it's not, it's so, it's beyond the influence of traditional celebrities. Now celebrities, they're all altered, you know, they're enhanced either cosmetically or with these drugs. Plus they have like the CGI, but these influencers who young people in high school look up to as though they are just like me in a sense i mean it's it's the 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 parasocial bond there it, it's just so vulnerable you know I, i'm not really being clear but i think you know what i mean that young guys i i really worry about too like yeah all i have to say i'm just glad that i did not have I'm, I'm so grateful that i did not we didn't have social media when i was when i was a young un because i just think it makes I just think it'd be really hard. All right, y'all, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I hope you had a great weekend when you're watching this, if it's the weekend still. Um, thank you so much for making it to the end. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.